In this presentation we're going to look at how to construct a correlation matrix using SPSS and we are using SPSS version 19 although I don't think there's that much, much difference between that and version 20 or version 18. The data set we're going to use is called iris.save. We have four numeric variables sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. Okay, so let's look at the data set here, and we have the four variables there. That that's um, this is iris.save, just slightly out of shot there. Sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. There's also the species variable here. We're not going to deal with that today. So what we're going to do is go to analyze. That's the first step we take in almost every analysis. Go to analyze. This particular case, we're going to go to correlation. We're going to go to correlation there, and what we do is go to bivariate. Now they have been selected here already, so I'm going to unselect them so you can see how they get selected. So what will happen here is all the variables will be collected here in this left hand side uh, dialog box. And what we do is the ones we want to select, we would press this button here, we would highlight them, press this button and they get transferred over here. The variables here means the variables that have been selected for analysis. I'm going to move that into the center there. So we have these four variables selected. What I'm going to do is click on Options. Now I'm going to select the mean as standard deviations. It's really just because we can. So I'll just continue that. I'm not going to cl click on the other one. but So we'll just mean and standard deviations. We'll have a look at that. There are three different types of uh, correlation coefficient. The most commonly used one is Pearson. It's parametric. There are the non-parametric ones, Kendall's tau and Spearman's rank, or Spearman correlation. Uh, they are used in the case of ranking data or data that's not normally distributed. We also have hypothesis tests here for whether or not the true value of the correlation is zero. And I'm going to leave that as is. So I'm going to click OK there and what's going to happen is that the correlation comes up. Now the output here is gets uh, uh, sort of shrank so it fits onto the podcast. Here we have them there. That's the mean, standard deviation and uh, number of valid observations for each of the four variables. So that's what happened there when we clicked that button. But this is what I'm interested in here. So we have the four variables with sepal length, sepal width, sep petal length, petal width, and they are aligned along the column there as, as columns as well. The diagonal values there are one. Uh, the correlation of sepal length and sepal length is one. That makes sense because any variable, the correlation of any variable with itself is going to be one. The correlation of, let's say, sepal length and petal length is not 0.872. And the correlation of sepal width and sepal length is minus now 0.118. In the bottom case, the bottom rows here, we have the number of valid observations in each case. And here, there are no missing data values, so we always have 150. That might be a, a different uh, matter in other uh, analysis. But the thing we're going to look at now is the significant two-tailed. This means is there a significant correlation uh, between the two variables? That means is the true value of the correlation non-zero? Well, the way we determine that is look at these significant values. If they are high, uh, for example, uh, higher than 0.25, we would uh, conclude that the null hypothesis, which is that they have the true correlation is zero, cannot be rejected. Here, the p-value is very small. The significance value is very small. So in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis. There is definitely a linear relationship of some sort between petal length and petal width. Here, in this, it would be the opposite case. Not 0.152. We can't. We can't reject the idea that there is no. Uh, relationship between the two and that that's f with a very low p-value that is obviously the case and that ends our presentation